Hello, it's Sarah. Long time no see, you guys. I've been busy in the craft room and elsewhere, and I just wanted to come on today and share some of what I've been up to. Um, doing a little craft show in September, so that's kind of been on the back of my mind. I definitely have plenty of stuff, so I've been working on, um, I did some burning, so basically this cross has been my inspiration for a lot of my faith this, this kind of like year, I guess. Um, and I've just had crosses on my mind. I have crosses on my jewelry. I have faith in my head. So um, crosses are a big substrate out there, especially Hobby Lobby. They do love crosses. So I bought this little pack of crosses, and I have probably six left to do. And I just played around with this simple pattern, wood burned it, um, and then painted it gently. Um, I did this. So, I mean, this was such a reasonable substrate to use. Um, another one, this is probably seven bucks around. Very similar, just did the same type of thing. Um, I shaded it a bit differently. So I shaded along the inside, all the inside of this. And this one I went around the outside and it has a border. Um, then I did this bigger one. I just wanted to come up with something and I think I saw this on Pinterest this type of floral, very simple basic shape. So I hand drew this um, on here, wood burned it again, and this time I used burnt sienna. I love burnt sienna, but it, it came out a lot more orange than I thought. So all three of these crosses have kind of like an orange theme to them. Like it's, I'm pulling orange a lot more, I'm noticing. I'm, I'm kind of gravitating toward the yellows and oranges these days. Um, still love all my colors but um so yeah and then I didn't do anything with the edge of this one I'm kind of debating if I just want to leave it plain it's sanded decent it's not sanded excellent and I don't even know if I want to sell it but I kind of do um I can't keep all this stuff <laughs> um so I did those three and then a friend of mine was sharing with me a project that she wanted to do in her garden, a mosaic outdoors. So I started thinking about, no, real tile mosaics, not my uh, mixed media mosaics. So this is, I've done those in the past. This is a project uh, from, I mean, I don't have, let me see if I have a date on here. I didn't even sign it. I'm just going to try and find something that I can put in the middle so the mirror doesn't, I'll put my, uh, <laughs> Anywho, um, this is all done. Actually, no, it's not. It's mainly stained glass. So what an actual sheet of glass, because I was doing um, stained glass at the time, and then the mosaics kind of came after. And this is some tile that you can get in a sheet at Home Depot. This tile was just, I cut it into a strip and then cut it into um, squares for the inner um border and then I have these little gems in here that I use for the flower centers and some hearts those were these are kind of made of tile you can get these at the craft store so that was where and I have one two three big frames that I've done and several of these littler ones I just this one's in my craft room it's got it's pinks and greens you can't really tell on camera they're not uh, bright bright pinks and some are even sheer and you can see the wood underneath or through. I kind of like that. Um, so that's that. And then, of course, I wanted to do a cross in stained glass. So I just started thinking about what I'm going to do for this one. Uh, I also got a few things on Amazon and online in pre-cut glass because I wanted to work in my craft room. I didn't want to have to be down the basement cutting everything. Um, I ordered a bunch of different tiles. I also went, Hobby Lobby had a sale recently, so I bought must, m most of what they had there um, to give it a try and see what it was like to just have pre-cut shapes and things to play with. So this is just starting, but I'll show you what I did do. I did a mandala, of course. I got a lot of stuff going on here. So this is one of my big mandala substrates just a big round I want to say this is probably a 14 inch circle and I just started 
like I said, these are pre-cut shapes. So these were the green right here, for instance, is a is a one inch tile that I just cut in half. It looks like there's a banged it up or something. Um, I've been using this. This is a wheel nipper, and this does real good for glass. I should be using something else for ceramic, but i um, kind of using that for everything. But these triangles are pre-made gl shiny glass. Um, there's glitter tiles in here. This is beads. I tried to see what beads would be like, so I actually just put um, strung beads in these spaces, and, and I don't love it. Um, this is just a big gem like these that you put in your um, floral arranging. Um, some more tiles, and as I went out, I started running out of colors, so I didn't have enough yellow. I had enough yellow. Uh, uh, wait, I didn't. I had to put a couple of off-white in there to fill it in. I had enough green. See the sparkle tile, the green? I had enough of that, uh, and I didn't have enough big orange ones to fill this, so I had to throw a couple red and yellow. Then I had enough, definitely had enough black, but I wanted to copy this black and white check, so I threw a couple white, like I did 4141. And then this edging, I had enough green, but I put little, see it's like dark, light, dark, light, dark, light, because I didn't have enough. Because as you get bigger, you need more tiles. So what I would suggest if anyone's starting out, you need a, a lot, like in here I put little, um, and my grout job, that's what I wanted to talk to you guys about today. My grout is, it was older and it was, it, there were some chunks in it. And so it wasn't uh, the best. When I went to wipe it back, I pulled out like right here. Let me see if you can see this. I'm going to try and zoom in. Right here is a divot because there was a chunk in there. So when I wiped away, the chunk of grout came out. So in other words, you got to use grout that's good that's nice like I have a couple of those spots right here there's a couple of divots or, or ditches and things it's, so it's not the best grout job um, but all in all I mean I like it I use a light color gray a lightish gray I can't think of the name of it but it's dried it's not good so I didn't want to use it for today's projects because I'm going to show you what I did I just wanted to see if this is glue no, it's definitely something. It's chipped like the uh, the glossy top of the of the tile got chipped when I cut it, probably. But I like it. I'm pretty happy with it. It sit it sits like cut. Now, this is what I wanted to tell you. This would have looked so different if I would have grouted it in a darker color. Just think like all of this. It would have. I don't know. It just would have given it a, a totally different vibe. So. I talked it over with a few people and I decided what I should do is I'm going to go get, I'm just going to pop this back over here so I have room. And because I don't have a ton of projects or big projects, I have this Hamsa hand and then I have this little. So now I'm running out of my pre-cut tiles that I ordered. So see what I'm saying is my I have fewer to choose from when it comes to color. Um, all right, let me just focus on the Hamsa hand for a minute. So, I I cut these. These I had, they were in their glass and they were at 1 inch squares, but I cut each one in half so that I could make this kind of outline of the hand to get the shape. Then I went in and then see these, the heart, the flowers, butterfly, moon, star, um, and then butterfly, and then I made the fish. I cut a butterfly in half to make the tail, and then I took one of these petal shapes and kind of just cut it, and then, you know, I made it look like a fish. Now, the decision comes now, because it's all done, it's all glued. These are kind of representing clouds, you know. What color grout? And what I decided to do for this one is I'm going to go with the lighter color grout. So I got, I went back to Home Depot and I decided to get pre-mixed grout. And I got natural gray, a bit darker than the original gray. And I got, they only had alabaster because I would have preferred a light gray too. And I didn't want white. 
I don't I didn't want white white I just I got this it's kind of like a taupe top right um, because what I think is going to happen if I use the lighter color on here all of these marks in between so you're going to definitely get a vibe of separate tiles if I used a darker grout here it would give the illusion of it being more solid color and then also I didn't I don't think I want it dark in here as much because I want that to kind of blend together so I think the lighter grout is what I'm going to use on this one <coughs> and then I think I'm going to use the darker grout and let me just show you what I did on this one again I'm running out of color and I'm and um, so I have to put at least let's see I had enough of these purple ones but on this purple I had some pink some purple some pink so I did pink and purple this is light green dark green I didn't even have enough to fill there this whole thing ended up being yellow by by force because I didn't have any other color that could make it all the way around so that's kind of how my design came in came to be because I just had those colors at hand this one I had to go red yellow orange red yellow orange I, I couldn't just do one color at all and I still kind of love it and even this green uh, it's three or four colors of green but I, I kind of like it you know um, I'm gonna paint the edge so I probably need to paint that real quick before I do this just so that I get some I don't want to I don't know I just feel like painting it first would make sense um, I can always touch it up after I grout and but I'll let you know I'll do that off camera let's do this one right now I think I'm gonna open this up I'm gonna put my gloves on let me move everything out of the way uh, my gloves are right here I could wear a mask but because this is pre-mixed I used a mask the first time when I used the, uh, the older because it's a powder and it's it's concrete and it's got you know a lot of stuff in there and I didn't want it in my lungs so I put put a mask on since we all have masks these days <coughs> hope everybody's doing well get your shot I have mine and I'll still wear a mask I don't care but I really feel like I'm not gonna get sick and if I do I won't have to go to the hospital anyway that's my little share on that now let's see how you open it I think Joe's coming up the stairs Ooh, look at that. Ooh, this is good. <laughs> hey, Joe. Oh, I don't know. I was just going to show him this because we mixed the first one. Hey, Joe. Uh, uh, All right, it's just you, Matt. All right. All I'm going to do is take this and I'm just going to push it into the grooves. It's as simple as that. Also because the tile, this one specifically, maybe not as much on my older ones when it was all stained glass, there's different heights. See, I don't know if this is too soft. This is so wet. I think you're supposed to let it stiffen a little bit. Anyway, it smells a little bit like uh, gluey too. But I like the color. I think it's I think this is gonna look nice it just you know it just occurred to me that you know you do all this work on the piece choosing your tiles and colors and placement and then I don't I don't want to just slap grout on there you have to kind of figure out what color to use so all right I'm gonna once I get this in the grooves I'm gonna leave it and then I'm, I'm gonna come back and I'll show you what happens when you wipe it away I feel like I'll be more successful than I was with the mosaic with the um, mandala because this is uh, I, I thought it through I read the directions and it did not say you had to stir it or anything it said just take your um, trowel because it, I guess they assume you're doing it on um, a bathroom floor or something and just push it into the cracks so see now I'm starting to take off the most of the excess I think I have it in the cracks hey Kirby and um, there's a couple really good YouTube videos about this and um, 
So definitely watch as many videos as you can to feel comfortable, but give it a shot, you know? It's, it's a little bit uh, less forgiving <laughs> than making a mixed media mosaic because, it, you know, you can draw blood. You can cut yourself with these tiles, but um, I really love the result. I love it. I've always loved texture like this and the shine. Okay, I am excited. I can see that it's in the grooves pretty good. I gotta get it off the edges. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I'm just making sure it's in all the nooks and crannies. And I'm gonna paint the round one and I'm going to do the other color on the round one because I just want to see the difference. So I'll come back and I'll do a reveal. But it's, it's quite wet. I was surprised. And I'm going to cover, I got to cover the lid because I want to use this. But yeah, how convenient because I didn't have to mix it and then wait for the mix. I could just dig right in. I mean, I hope I did it right. I read the directions. And this is non-sanded, I believe. It feels a little gritty, but I originally used non-sanded grout because it's just smoother, I think. I'm going to close this up. And I'll take off my gloves. And I'm going to give it a chance to just dry a little bit. Ooh. And let me see what it says. So, oh. All it says is, can't, you can't see this. It just says, oh, that's in the wrong language. If, if I was using a porous tile, it says to prep the tile by wetting it first. So or to pre-seal it. But it says lightly dampen any absorptive porous tile with clean cool water and then it just says holding a rubber grout float at 45 degree angle force the grout diagonally into the joints ensuring joints are completely filled and remove excess grout using the edge of the float held at a 90 degree angle work on an area about 5 to 10 square feet at a time. Shaping joints and clean up can begin immediately using a damp small pour grout sponge which I have I'm going to use I have two different things <clears throat> this is your classic but this is also kind of like a buffer and a like it's like styrofoam or something which was I used this to push my first one at my big uh, anyway but I'll just use the sponge I'm going to let this dry um, but that's it and then it says and move in a circular motion. Use clean water and sponge, changing water frequently. Wait four hours before removing the haze from the tile surface with a soft, dry cloth. So I'm not even going to touch this for a while. I'm going to really let it, and then I'm going to take the dry, even the, the woman, what was her name? One of the people on YouTube said, just use a paper towel at first because water will kind of dig too deep and I think I did that the first time so I am going to um, really just set this aside and I will let you know how it goes though I will pull I'll pull it and I think I feel like this is sandy it's a bit see can you hear it hitting the I don't think this is non sanded and maybe that's why people like non sanded because it's more um, yeah, this is definitely, I would bet you, because that was what I was going to check, too. See if it said, I didn't see anything on the front. It says, simple grout. Uh, ready to use, da da da, -da alabaster, premixed grout. But it doesn't say sanded or not sanded. But I, I use, I've always used non-sanded, but I'm guessing they only made this with the sanded kind. Anyway. I'll let you know. All right, I'm excited. I can already tell 
that the outline is going to look checkery and the background looks so good. I'm very happy I chose the lighter color for this. I think it's going to be perfect. And like I said, this one, I'm going to paint this. Maybe I'll paint it like a gray to match the grout. I'm going to use, this is called natural gray. And then um, I, can even, I can even hit this with a dry brush of something to kind of pop it, or gold. I'll probably put gold on top. I don't know. Maybe I won't paint it gray. I should continue the color. We'll see. We'll see what I do. All right, you guys. Thanks for watching.